So Rob Gill, founder, CEO of Epic Financial Strategies, and I'm here to tell you another story where, once again, we're hunting excellence, and we like to find folks that disrupt status quo, that don't do what everybody else does, that has an inner belief and a stick to that just isn't normal that you see every single day. And today, I'm with Mallory Devine. Hey, though, Mallory. Hi, nice to meet you. She is the winner, folks. She is the winner of Mr. Beef's Island Challenge, where she won. I don't even know how many people signed up for it, but there was 50 people that showed up for three days, and she came home and took the title. And I got to tell you, you're in for a special treat because, once again, all you entrepreneurs that are out there today, this comes down to how can you improve your business? How can you scale your business? How can you show up and make the world a better place? And how do you overcome limiting beliefs? And I think Mallory's gonna take us on a journey today. Wow, how grateful am I? Thank you so much for coming in studio, by the way. And tell me if I'm wrong, but this is your first real interview after you won? Yes, absolutely. This is wow. my first podcast ever. So folks, you heard it here. It's the first podcast <laughs> ever. We wanna take it, rewind the back. We wanna take notes and we want Mallory to take us on her journey right now to show us exactly what she did to get to where she was to win the island. How's that? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Uh, so just go over the overall process. Well, let me ask you a question. Let me just start from the very beginning before we talk about the island. Where are you from? So I'm from New Jersey. Um, I'm currently living in Middlesex, New Jersey with my family. Is that the same where you grew up? Yep, okay. where I grew up in my very small town um, in Middlesex County. People don't even know that the town Middlesex exists. I didn't even know that either. Yeah. I always heard of Middlesex <laughs> County. I never knew that there yeah. was Middlesex town. Yeah, our graduating class was like 150, which wow. isn't anything too tiny, but definitely yeah. a small town. Um, but I think it gave me a great foundation in terms of... So how many siblings? Three. Tell me the early, like the, you know, ages, you know, four through 14. What yeah. was that like early on? Um, chaotic. Tell me more. Purely chaotic. So I have a twin sister, which wow. I'm extremely thankful for. Um, especially we were the first of our family. So growing up, I feel like I didn't have to go through those things alone. So were you identical or fraternal? Fraternal. Yeah. So I fraternal. know a little bit about twins. You don't know life not having a twin. No. You don't even know what it's like not to have another version of you. No, absolutely right? not. And for all of us normies, normal people, supposedly, <laughs> yeah. right? We don't know what it's like to have someone that's just like us, even though you guys are probably different in so many ways. Yes, right? absolutely. Yeah. I and, and people don't understand that about twins either. Nope. So can you talk a little bit about like growing up, you had a twin sister, yeah. were, were you guys competitive? Did you play sports? Absolutely, extremely competitive. Um, one thing I'll say from, right off the bat is I feel like we were total opposites, but we really complimented one another. Uh, we always call each other yin and yang. Okay. Her weaknesses are my strengths and vice versa. And you guys, like early on in fifth, sixth, seventh grade, you had each other's back or was it like, uh, like what was that part, like yeah. with friends and stuff? Yeah, so we shared the same exact friend group. We awesome. shared a car, we shared a room. Close everything. Okay. Um, what about disputes? How did you settle disputes? Did that ever happen? It's rare. Honestly, yeah. rare. I, I think siblings fight a lot. I think they do. twins fight a lot. They do. We rarely fought at all. How did that um, happen? What? How did we rarely that fight? you didn't fight, yeah. That's great, by the way. I don't know. I don't Amazing. know. Amazing. I mean, my parents are, you know, this must be super lucky. Yeah. Uh, but no, I think for the most part, we... And you said three siblings. Were you guys the olders? Or, yes. Or, okay, so yeah, you had yeah. a younger... So I'm the oldest with my twin. Yep. Who's older? I'm one minute older. Okay, yep. got it. Yeah, so obviously I use it to my advantage yes. when I can. Yes, yes. Um, and then I have one sister that's seven years younger and one that's 10 years younger. Okay, so it's all girls. All girls. So dad's got a lot of weddings to pay for. It. Yes. Mom and dad. Yep, absolutely. Understood. Yep. yep. So tell, early on, played sports? Yes. Academics, what do all that Um, play? Everything. I think I tried every sport. Um, whether I was good at it or not, that's another thing. Uh, but I ended up later on doing cheerleading and track but probably tried every single sport. I did play basketball for quite a bit. Did you really? How many years? Uh, let's see, third grade to eighth grade. Oh, wow. So, AAU? No. Um, travel? No. Travel. Tra travel. So, local and travel, like, you know. Yeah, local, like, travel within the town. Got it. My Understood. sister plays AAU. You could talk to her about that. Your younger but, sister. Yeah. And yeah. what grade is she in? She's a junior this year. High school? Yeah. Oh, so she's a baller. Yep. She plays high school. Uh, she's been playing basketball since Natalie and I were wow. playing in third grade. Since the day she could walk, she was So you taught her basketball. how to play? She learned sure. from your mistakes. <laughs> yes, right? that's yeah. a better way to put it. <laughs> and what position does she play? You know, uh, she's point guard. Okay. Yep. Awesome. So played basketball, eventually settled in with track, did some cheerleading. Did your sister do the same? Uh, no. Okay, so she, that was a nice divergence between yeah, both of you guys. She was more so on the softball route, and okay. she stuck with basketball. Okay. Um, out of the two of us, the one thing I'll note: sixth grade, she made the basketball team. I did not. Uh -oh. I did um, the score book. I practiced with the team. Who's the coach that <laughs> cut the twin? Wow. Yeah, um, but for her, it was better off that she stuck with basketball for a little bit longer than I did. Were you guys both point guards too? Same position? Yes. Okay, yep. so did she feel bad about it? Like, no. What was that? No. All right. I think her and I, like I said, yin and yang. Like, yep. we, I had my interest, she had hers, and it just worked but you, out really you did well the, the book way. for the games, though. 
Say it again. You still you showed you did the books for the games. Yeah. You were still there. Yeah. You were present. And that point, um, I was very apprehensive against it at first. Um, you were. I was. Talk about it. Um, my dad was like Mallory. If you okay. want to get better at basketball, you may as well put yourself out there. You may as well do scorebook, practice with the team, wow. continue to get better, like show that you're willing to make an effort to get better, wow. um, and do it. And it was embarrassing being a 12 year old, you know, saying that, but no. it worked for me. I made the team the next year. Can I say something? Yeah. Now? I'm sure, folks, anyone that's watching this, that that lesson served her well when she was on the island with Mr. Beast. I guarantee, at some point, that played a factor into her decision making later on. We could we could hold that, but mm -hmm. but I I really appreciate you sharing that. That's awesome. So now you go into high school. What's the high school? You know, cheerleading and track. Like, what yeah. was that like? We, we got highly competitive cheerleaders. Yeah. So Were you good in track. For the most part, with um, cheerleading, when you would first enter, you could make JV or varsity. Um, thankfully, I was very fortunate to make varsity my freshman year. Yep. Um, competitive cheerleading was in the winter time, and then with track, you get varsity letters by points. Got it. Um, the one thing I'll say about track, um, I was not the most talented. I got one school record that my now younger sister just took last year. That's cool. Um, it was a four by 100, so not just by myself. But, um, That's pretty cool. Track is 1 million percent. What you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. It's by yourself, your, your soul. It's, it's like a boxer, like a tennis player. Or absolutely. It's independent. Yeah. Um, you don't get credit for it. Like It's purely what you put into it. Yeah. And um, for me, it was just great. I originally joined just to try to stay in shape. Yeah. But for me, it became a goal every year just to try to cut down my times and everything. And I was not, you know, a D1 track runner, but I was still able to get school records and make it to states and things because Amazing. of, you know, Amazing. putting the work in. And did that help you get to college? Absolutely. Just being a, yeah, Absolutely. And what school did you go to? Um, I originally went to Florida Atlantic. Okay. My freshman year, but transferred to East Carolina University. And what, tell us about that. The transferring process? Yeah, the whole thing, Florida Atlantic, then why you transferred, like what uh, was that? Yeah, so f Florida Atlantic, uh, for me, it was really far from home. Yep. It was like a 22-hour drive from here. Ooh. Um, Did you go home a lot? No, Did I actually fly? didn't. No. Nope. Okay. Uh, that's one thing I'm really thankful for. You couldn't just go home whenever you wanted. So when I had those moments of feeling homesick or, oh, I don't feel good, let me just call my mom or my dad. I don't think I want my kids not to come home, though. The, my, my one guy's a senior. I want him to be, I don't know if I want him that far It's away. fair, but yeah. I think it gives you the opportunity to really grow up on your own and become yeah. an independent person. Yeah. Um, and how long were you there for? That was freshman year. Just, oh, you, just one year. year? Yep. Okay. Came home. Now, year. did you play, did you track? Did you do anything in Florida Atlantic? Nope. Okay. Nope. Nope. Just did the Grades freshman and activities. activities. Yep. Yeah. I was uh, nursing for three and a half years out of my college years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, That's not easy. Nope. So a lot of times I wasn't able to go out and be as social as many others could be. Yep. Um, but again, got so, me. So what made you transfer to East, East Carolina? East Carolina, yeah. yeah. For myself, um, Florida Atlantic. I don't know if you've ever been to Boca Raton. I have, but I also know Florida Atlantic was good in the tournament one year. Well, they, they made like they a crazy sports. run. Like they were like a Sweet Sixteen, Elite Eight yeah. team one time out of nowhere. Yeah, I don't know how recently that was, but that's what I think of they, Florida Atlantic. They definitely have their good sports here and there. Um, but for me, it was going to school in Boca Raton. Yep. And it wasn't that idea of a college experience that yep. I was looking for. And in my head, I kind of just wanted to be surrounded by people Kids. my age when yeah. I wanted to go out and do social things and stuff and um, was looking for more of that college experience, like a college town. And why did you pick East Carolina? Um, was it somebody referred it? Did you? One of my best friends was on the dance team there. Okay. And when I was looking to transfer, I was walking around and the campus itself sold me. I just thought it was the most beautiful place. I Amazing. thought it had that small town kind of feel that exactly what I was looking for. And I decided to go for it. And then you spent the next three years there? Yep. And where did your sister go, your twin? Uh, she went to Utica in upstate New York. Okay, so that was far. Yeah. Yeah, so what was it like, ready? Yep. You had a twin your whole life, next to each other your whole life. Now all of a sudden, you've seen each other every six months. What was that like for you? It was extremely difficult. FaceTime? Tech, like FaceTime. What? Thank God for FaceTime. Um, I'll note that I was FaceTiming her while I was on the beach in the ocean in January while she was walking through a foot or two of snow. Yeah, you was definitely yeah. came. That's yeah. what she picked. I picked, I picked my place. <laughs> Um, but it was hard on you? Extremely difficult. Yeah. Like I said, I think it kind of forced me to grow up a little bit quicker. Yeah. Um, just being away from home and then being apart from my twin. Yeah. But I wouldn't trade that for, for the world. I really do think it helped me become much more independent 
it challenged me to put myself out there more. I couldn't rely on my twin for everything. I couldn't yeah. rely on my family for everything. And so overall, I look at it as a positive. So I'm going to ask you a question. You may not know the answer yet or not. Okay. Do you consider yourself professionally an entrepreneur or you don't know yet? I don't know yet. Okay. Yeah. In college, was there any entrepreneur classes that you took or was there anything about that that stood out for you? I want to say, unfortunately, no, because okay. I was nursing. Yep. You didn't really have as much of the flexibility of being able just to take elective courses or anything like that. Now, are you following the nursing path even now? I know you, we're going to talk about what you do, but yeah. is that still part of the... Um. Hope maybe down the line. Okay, so not now. Fair enough. Yeah. So you graduate, you know, when... when 2022. And when you graduated, there was a contest that was coming out, yeah. correct? Yep. And if you want to talk a little bit about like, hey, because I don't even know, who, I just, sorry, I just found out about who Mr. Beast was, and I'm just a guy from Bayonne, just Rob from Bayonne, just a simple guy. Mr. Beast, from what I understand, you are the GOAT in the space <laughs> of social media, YouTube. I'm honored to even be able to get close to you by being here with Mallory. But talk about what happened. You were in college, I think, when the yep. contest came out? Yep, absolutely. Can you talk a little bit about so, it? So first thing I'll talk about Mr. Beast. Um, he's completely blown up in a matter of years since I've even gotten gotten to hear about him, get to, gotten to learn about him. Uh, my two younger sisters. Well, who is he? He's, okay, he's basically <laughs> known for being crazy. He does these insane contests. Sounds like he's from Bayonne. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> um, he gives away loads of money. He'll give away a Lamborghini on the spot, wow. a Tesla on the spot. Um He's a wild person. That's so why. in college, everyone knew who Mr. Beast was. Yes, everyone okay. knew who he was. Got it. And you're in college. Yep. And um, I have to give credit to my two younger sisters, Jesse and Kaylee. They don't fangirl over much. That's the one thing I'll say. But at that time, they were huge little YouTubers trying to post their little YouTube videos. And all they talked about was Mr. Beast. And I didn't know who he was at the time. Um, and when I transferred to ECU... I think I was buying stuff for my dorm, and um, one of his friends was in Walmart, and I didn't even know who it was at the time. Wow. Um, but they, the way their faces dropped, the way they panicked, oh, you're, you're, I your was sisters. like, who is this guy? Yeah, yeah. Um, so off of that, I learned who Mr. Beast was, and I started watching his videos and everything myself. But, and you uh, got into it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. His videos are extremely captivating. Yeah. yeah. And, and that Nothing was like it. during your college years? Yeah. So then what happened? Like there was a con tell me about like yeah, how do you so sign up for a contest? With the contest, um, basically I was given the opportunity to apply for this video um, and to do a casting interview and was overall picked. So you knew so at this point you've seen Mr. Beast a couple of years through your sister, watch it on your yeah. own, and now all of a sudden he's coming out and giving out an island. Yeah. To the winner. Yes. And you said, Hey, let me just like how, what was that? How did you apply? Um, did you send in an email? Did you send a video? Like, so basically I had like a casting interview. Okay. And I was out to dinner like a couple weeks later with my girlfriends and just got a random call saying like, hey, do you have a passport? And I said, yes. And they're like, do you want to come to the Bahamas for a Mr. Beast video? Wow. Did you have any idea that that was even possible? No. Wow. No, no That's clue at all. I didn't totally even think amazing. I would even have the opportunity to be in a video. So from the start, was extremely thrilled just to get a vacation to the Bahamas to be in the opportunity to have How did you know it was real at first? Like, could, what if somebody could have been playing a prank? That's a really fair point. Yeah. Um, I think my family was extremely skeptical. Good. Um, I, I got that with your dad, by the way. <laughs> yeah. How um, you doing, Mr. Divine? <laughs> but for the most part, I think for myself, I was willing to take the risk, and I've heard enough good things about him that I believed it was legit. No, no, he was legit. But how did you know that it wasn't some other kind of scam? Like, was there, was there a con like... Did you talk Again, to... Again, it was mostly trust. Like, it was mostly so trust. So you jumped on a plane. You said yes. You jumped on a plane, then what? Yeah. Now, from the time of, here's my question. Mm -hmm. So however long it took from hello, we'll call hello to yes, right? Yeah. To the world seeing it. Yeah. What was that time frame? Like, did you so, fly back and I have to, you couldn't say nothing to anybody? Yes, that was the most That's difficult. That's interesting. The most yeah. difficult part that I had to experience. I had an NDA signed. Um, I got home. I had all my friends from home saying like, hey, like, I heard you like tried out that video. How'd it go? And I had to lie to so all of them. So they didn't even know you already finished the <laughs> nope, whole thing. No, nope. wow. and I had to lie about everything that went on. No, no, I don't even want to know. Yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> you know, we won't say that part. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I had to hide it from everybody, and it ate me alive because from the time of getting home um, to the video coming out, I think it probably took about three weeks. Okay, that so must for three tough. weeks, yeah. I could not say anything to anyone. Yeah, it and, ate me alive. And was it when the video came? Was it like all in one day when they when they aired it, or was it like over three weeks? Like, what did that? What um, was that process like? So basically, with filming the video, there were times where it would get dark really quickly. Yeah. Um, and in terms of traveling to the island, we would have to take the mini airplanes at certain points. Yep. And those don't fly at night, so they had to cut up. There was a what? 
those mini airplanes. Did you say fight night or flight night? Sorry, flights at oh, night. Oh, flights at there night. We go. Flights at night. New Jersey, we speak fast <laughs> over here, folks. We'll make so sure the closed captions got it. Yep. Um, and so they had to break up the video a little bit. So okay. It ended up being... So here's my question, though. Yeah. So it sounded like you were there for a couple of days. Mm-hmm. Right. Let's put that to the side. You didn't get home. Was there a one day one announcement when it came out, or was it like you had to watch it for three days at home? Like, what was no. that like? It was it, all. One video came out. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. So, so take me through your three days, whatever three you can share. Yeah. So, absolutely. I think for the most part, whoever has watched, they might know who Mr. Beast is. They may I'm sure everybody. Themselves. I'm the only one that doesn't know Mr. Beast. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm the so outlier. To make things really short and sweet. Um, no, was... take your time. <laughs> Let everyone feel the experience of what it was like. Okay. It, it doesn't seem like you know. Not, I don't know anyone that's won an island in my entire life. That's I'm a very fair point. Fifty years old. I've never <laughs> met anyone that won an island, so I'm interested. Fair point. Um, first thing I'll say is that there was a fire. That we all had to build. There was a hundred people on the island. That's how it started. Okay. Um, so with the hundred, they said the first fifty to build a fire move on. Okay. So immediately after two hours of that portion being filmed, fifty people were already on that flight home. Really? Yes. And it was it a fast process to build the fire? It's, no, 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 okay. no, not at all. It took forever. And I'm telling you, like you, you watch the video, you watch a clip, and you're like, oh, it's simple. Just make people a fire. don't realize. Yeah. My arms were sore for like four days afterwards. Um, the one thought in my head is that if I get sent home right now because I couldn't build a fire, my family is going to make fun of me for the rest of my life. <laughs> so that was what kept kept me going. My arms were numb. The, and plain, the, the pain pleasure principle, yes. full effect. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Did you ever build a fire in your life before this? <laughs> Absolutely not. Did you? Did Do they, I look like the person no, that builds fires? No, I, I mean either. So here's my question. Did they, did they say, hey, this is how you do it? Or Nope. Nope. How did you know to put the rocks together? That's, they, had it, they had it laid out. Were you watching other people? or Nope. No. Nope. Were you like by you yourself? You had to stay focused. You had to focus. But was there like a hundred people next to each other? Yeah. Or was it? It was a hundred people laid out. Wow. So the one detail that I'll give. So like if somebody says, oh, I want, like, were you feeling the pressure? Like, oh, yes. this person, Absolutely. this person. Because he would be screaming out of excitement and you just knew oh. that there was only top 50. So that number was dwindling down. Wow. Imagine that. Yeah. Yeah. Kev, craziness, right? <laughs> so the one detail. So you're building a fire. Yep. Right? Well, I'll say the detail I'll give is the fact that I think people are always skeptical about Mr. Beast saying that everything's scripted and how are these videos even possible? They're not scripted whatsoever. Yeah. Um, none of us knew what we were doing. There was cameras all lined up. Everything was set up. Film time was two minutes. Okay, we're going two minutes. Yeah. We still didn't know what we were doing. Yeah. Mr. Beast, just so you know, when I met Mallory privately, she made it very clear that none of this stuff was scripted for all you folks that are out there. <laughs> yeah. If you think it's scripted, according to Mallory, Ma- Mallory it's not. It's not. Ahead. It really isn't. Um, but yeah, they told us as the camera's rolling, okay, you're building a fire, go. Yeah. Um, Build the fire, you're one of 50. Yep. Make it to top 50. I was 38 out of 50. So Ooh, right there, so you were cutting it close. I was cutting it yeah. pretty dang close. Yeah. Um, got it. Yep. Had that excitement ready for the next challenge. Now, was it like a minute later the next challenge? Or was it like, all right, let me go grab a, a, a Twinkie or something? <laughs> I would probably get the Twinkie. It was transporting to the next challenge. Okay. That was probably the next part of it. Yep. Um, and then it got started to get dark, like I said, with the planes. Yep. So we had to cut it the next day so like that means you go to bed yeah how was the sleeping arrangements um they were the best yeah probably and not the best was like i want to say relationships i mean like friendships developed during this time of night oh absolutely. conversations and absolutely. stuff like that what was that like um that was my favorite experience out of all of it um we really were placed with people from all over the country um that were randomly selected yeah through subscribers a lot of people actually i think their kids were selected but you have to be 18 to be in his videos got it um so because they weren't yeah. picked the parents would go instead yeah um so all different walks of life from all different areas and everything so just getting to hear everyone's stories and where they're from and everything was the most can, entertaining part can of i life. ask a question and I, I don't know if you kind of can answer this but you know sometimes on these shows it seems a little bit more cutthroat was that the situation this seemed a little bit different mm-hmm. was this more of like a supportive like a like was, everyone kind of cheering for each other kind of thing yes. versus, you know, someone trying to take each other's legs out. Yeah, absolutely. It was extremely supportive. Um, I still talk to so many people. It's amazing. In the amazing. Video. The job uh, I work today was off of one of my friends that I made. Uh, we'll get into that in a second. So now you're in day two. You wake up. What's going on? Day two. Um, Mr. Beast, I think what made him grow in the shortest period of time, what made him the most famous was his Squid Games video. Um, he recreated Squid Games. So the second Can challenge. Can you talk to me like I'm? Too, I have no <laughs> idea what Squid Games yeah, is. I so apologize. That's fair because I didn't really know Squid Games myself. But basically, it was a part where they put, um, I believe it's four or five hundred. I think it's five hundred people in a room, and then basically it's a show on Netflix where you have to kill people 
Like, it's like you do these challenges, and if you don't win, okay. you die, basically. All right, I gotta watch. Um, I gotta catch yeah, up on that one. Yeah, I, I have to rewatch myself, clearly. Yeah. Um, but he recreated that. And yep. so, in that second challenge, he recreated one of the scenes, yep. which was red light, green light. Yep. Out of the 50 people, the first 20 to cross that line would make it. Okay, so now we go from 50 to 20. Yep. Was that a uh, 20 minute thing, two hour thing? Like, what was the time? Was it stressful? It was. I'm sure everything was stressful, but. <sighs> Well, I can't even explain to you how stressful that was. Okay? Now, you, listen, you're competitive. You play sports. You, <laughs> yeah. you did, so did that factor into your competition? Absolutely. Side? For myself, um, I saw that red line at the end, and I was making it. I yeah. had, again, I think for myself, like you say competitiveness, competitive yep. amongst friends, competitive, competitiveness amongst family is a completely different thing. It is, 100%. Um, you throw it all out the window. Absolutely. And yeah, I have two younger sisters that they introduced me to Mr. Beast. That's I had to amazing. I like a cool older sister, amazing. you know? I didn't look good. So you just finished phase two. You went from 50 down to 20. Yes. And it was stressed out because of competition, but family has competition, whole nine yards. I get it. Yep. What was that like? So now is it like, can you see the finish line yet? Or is it like, all right, I could be top 10. Like, what was the mindset at that point? Were um, you just locked in? Yeah, at that, at that point, I wasn't looking at anybody else. Oh, now, really... now everybody, there was no more friendships. No. Well, no, now, no. Now, I was I like, now you're like this <laughs> until like the end of the night. It was tunnel vision. I wanted yeah. to make it across that red line. Um, one thing that like I make fun of myself for every time they stopped, like you asked, how long did it take? Maybe, maybe 30 minutes, maybe an hour, maybe four hours. I couldn't tell you. You were so locked in. But every time they said red light, I swear to you, it felt like 20 minutes and my body would start shaking so bad. Wow. And I think they would only count people out technically if, like you actually moved, like you twitched. But like if you immediately stop and my foot is up. You have to hold that. Oh, so you got to hold the position. Yes. Wow. Yeah, that's okay. red light, green light. So I would have, I would have failed that. Yeah, test. my entire body was shaking. I had I cameramen laughing at me. Like it was a situation that was making me extremely anxious. Mm. Um. So as it closer to the end. Wait, I have a question. Yeah. So like, I've never been in a contest like that, but you know, there were supporters. Mm -hmm. Did, was there within the rules? Was there people starting to cheer for you? Like yes. the cat. Yes. Can you talk a little? Whatever you could talk about, can you talk about yeah, that so experience? Yeah, so you're saying like, within like the film crew? Yeah, within... was there people like, say, come on, stay with it, you're doing good. Like, yeah, just encourage yeah. you through the process. Everybody was extremely supportive. Um, as much as it's a competition, yeah. I think everybody that gets a chance to be in a Mr. Beast video <laughs> is just thankful for the opportunity. But see, this goes back to who he is, though, because yeah. he's the leader, right? Mm -hmm. So he sends a message that it doesn't sound like he's sending a cutthroat message. It's, it's about, to me, once again, just based on what you're sharing, it sounds more supportive and and really like inclusive in a situation where there is going to be a winner. It's not a participation trophy, but we don't need to make the people that don't win, notice the words, I'm not saying lose, yeah. that don't win feel like they're an outcast. Absolutely. And that's what I'm getting from this. Absolutely. So, um, so day two, you cross whatever, whatever the line is, what happens next? Are you flying um, somewhere in a helicopter? Yeah, or? so the one thing I'll say off of that, that right there was like a really close point for me. You think the fire is one thing. Okay. 30 out of 50, I just make that. I just made the red line. I, at one point, um, slid. My foot was this far from the red line. And I looked, and a bunch of people had crossed over. Okay. And so I thought, crap, my one opportunity, I missed it by this much. Game of inches. When they looked. And you thought it was over. I thought it was over. Okay. Yep. And I, again, immediately thought about my family, and I'm like, they're going to make fun <laughs> of me for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, so... I looked and I was very close to the red line. It turned out there were a few people that moved okay. after red light. Um, so thankfully there was two more spots and I had this much room and thankfully oh the God. next second green light, I slid my foot in, made top 20. By so, this much, I'm telling you by this much. So now you're top 20. Yeah. Mid Is this early day two, mid day two? Is there another event in day two? At this point, this is probably going into mid day two. Okay, so there's more day two stuff. Yeah. Right. Yep. Was it time to relax after this, or was it like right on to the next thing? Right on to the next thing. Tell it, take us through it. This part was actually kind of brutal. Um, my one friend Gabby, I'll shout out Gabby. She truly is the sweetest person I've ever met. Major shout out to Gabby. <laughs> um, but they put the pressure on her. She was the earliest subscriber. Okay. Um, that's what it was. Like we got these shirts that said your subscriber number. Okay. By the millions. What were you? Twenty nine. Twenty nine million. Twenty nine million. Yes. Wow. God, um, I got like a hundred. Yeah, yeah, no, no. That would be really <laughs> impressive. That would be crazy impressive. Um, but no, I got like a hundred subscribers. Oh, you're saying I'm you have a I got like nine. Well, I'm not gonna go ahead. <laughs> yeah, nine thousand. So, um, off of that, they made her pick ten people to leave. Oh no. Um, and there was twenty left. Yes. So she had to pick ten people. Yes. Oh. Yes. How did she? 
she did she, she hated it, it. Did she do it quick or was it? Like, um, it was awful for her. Were um, you like, hey, Gabby, what's up? How you doing? You yeah, know, it I'm, actually got to a point where like she she couldn't handle it. Okay. So they kind of have to just randomly disperse and basically have a situation where like everybody line up, go like this, randomly pick one person. Okay. That's how it ended up happening because I think Gabby just knew like what the stakes were for her and for everybody at this point. Like yeah. everyone truly, there wasn't um, bad blood between anybody. I think everyone heard about each other's stories, yeah. their families and everything. Like everybody wanted everyone to succeed. To win, yeah. It, absolutely. Yeah. So now... Gabby or somebody, now there's 10 people left, right? Yeah. So are we into day three yet or are we still at the night of day this two? This is, so I guess now that I'm looking forward back at it, it probably was overall more just so two full days. Yep. Um, but yeah, so right into the next challenge, we went over to a pirate ship. Okay. Yeah. Now this is a famous video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk um, about it. <laughs> so for anyone that hasn't seen it, um, all 10 of us were put on a pirate ship. They let us have fun for a little bit. They gave no, us was this like peace. an hour, two hours? Was it like, what yeah. was the whole set? It was probably a couple hours worth. Okay. Um, we got to eat. Like I said, we had a feast. Like a real meal this time? Or? Real meal. Okay, like chicken and stuff? Yep. And right. I'm going to sound like a spoiled brat. I don't like seafood. Okay. I'm very picky. I'm a very picky eater myself, trust me. Yeah. Um, so I think I had a couple pieces of bread. I gave my lobster <laughs> legs to other people. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we had to have a feast and we got to talk with everyone for a while. Okay. And I think specifically within that moment, out of the entire video, that's when I got the closest with everybody. That okay. top ten. Got it. Um, Can I pause for a second? Yeah. During this time, is there a lot of interaction with Mr. Beast? Does he give him? Is he around? Like, what's what does that look like from him to you guys? Absolutely. So, I'll say Mr. Beast is so driven by his videos and just being, you know, top dog and everything. Um, for is himself. he just different? You just know he's a different person? Yes, okay, absolutely. So, like, for himself, in between filming, a lot of times it was him just, like, focusing on what he was going to say next or just yep. taking a moment just to, like, breathe and whether it was, like, meditation or anything like that. Like, he's so invested wow. in his videos. So, um, for him, it was just kind of, like, taking the time to focus on what was coming next. Amazing. We did have moments where he got to interact with him, and I don't know if anyone thinks this as well or is skeptical, but Mr. Beast is, like, such a friendly, humble um, the most Isn't normal that, human being you could ever imagine. Isn't you wouldn't that amazing? think the most su successful YouTuber ever. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Like, just to even think about that. And is he like a young dude or is he yeah. like yeah. Mr. Beast? Is he like an old, like me or is he no. like a young guy? I would say he's maybe, maybe like a couple years older than me. Okay. Yeah. So, so maybe he's been like doing this since his teens. 26. How long has he been running the show? Um, I believe he started. I don't want to give you that answer because I'm going to be wrong. Yeah. No problem. Um, very young though. Not a teen. But young. Well, he's doing something right. That's for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. So now, feast. You're having some bread. You're connecting with everybody. Mm -hmm. Now, do you all know that this is the finale? Or um, you guys don't we, know? We didn't know. We okay. had no clue. Everything there you go. was just... All right. So you don't know what's going on. You just keep... To try to keep your sanity. Now, what are you thinking? Are you thinking I have a chance at winning this? Like, wh what's going on with you, if you could remember? This? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, one thing I'll say, and like, some pe people might consider it cheesy, but, like, on the plane ride there... I really did get like a gut feeling. Like okay. I just was, I would myself was praying to God and just kind of saying like, if there's anything coming my way, let me know. And I just had that gut feeling. Um, if I may ask, were yeah. you going through some challenges in life that, that gave you this paradigm shift or was it just part of your course? I think it was just part of my course. Yep. I definitely was like looking for a sign though, I think at that point in Got my it. life. And Got that it. is definitely a sign that I received. Uh, yeah, let's go. Let's yeah. take, us, take us home. Yeah. So, um, at that point, I was really confident in myself. Yep. Um, and I knew, like, that confidence, I think, was getting me somewhere at that point. Yep. So I just wanted to keep going with it. Yep. And, yeah. And now, what's the what happens after the yeah, feast? Yeah, so then next is where he puts 10 of us on a pirate ship, like I said, with the feast and everything. But um, at that point, we all had to pick a plank. Okay. They were all held up by ropes. At one point, they would cut the rope. And if you were on a good plank, you'd stay up. If you were a bad plank, you'd fall into the water. Okay. Um, he went around and they're like, who wants to go first? Someone raised their hand. He goes, they cut the rope, he's safe. Okay. Who wants to go next? All of a sudden my hand was up. And I was like, why did I raise my hand second? Um, the adrenaline that rushed through my body, I couldn't feel my legs, I was numb, I, oh got, I was gonna throw up, whatever. I feel, I feel the stress right now. Yeah, absolutely. So um, in my head I was like trying to think I was, I'm not really like a numbers girl, but I was like, I'm one of four girls. Yep. Um, maybe plank four makes sense. And as I was walking up to it, it just didn't feel right. Like I just mm. had that gut feeling. I was like, mm, I don't know. 
So I think I went over to plank two at that um, point. And um, within that plank, they cut it. It was good. Okay. I was up. I was safe. And plank four ended up falling into the water. Wow. So thank God. Good choice. Yeah, thank yeah. God that I picked plank two. So did they ask any questions in plank two? Or you just this was just about if you're safe or not? Safe or not. So there's more to the story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So right. the one thing that's really interesting that was a total coincidence is that the first five people to pick planks were the five people that were safe. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Out, yeah. out of the ten. Yeah, out that's of the ten. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. So um, off of that, they said, okay, there's five of you. Five of you are actually now going to the island. Yep. Which I could say my island, but we actually call it Ben's K. Um, and with that island, the five of us went over there. Like an hour later? Yeah. Okay, Yeah, cool. I would say about an hour later. And um, How big was the island? Like, what did the island look like? I would say... Was it, was it finished? Like, was it... Yeah, so Mr. Beast himself put a lot of work into the island. Okay. Um, they added a helipad to it. They had a little cabana type setup. They added a pool. Wow. Um, they had the golf carts on there, which wow. was fun to ride around in. Um, and a little fire pit. So they definitely added a lot to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, it was 12.75 acres, I believe. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So, so it's now, decent size. So you're there. Yep. And now what happens? Uh, this part, thank God it did not blow up in my face. It would eat me alive to this day. Mm. Um, Mr. Beast came over with $50,000 checks. He handed all of it to us. He handed mm. one each to all of us. Um, I was so excited, so thrilled, thinking, oh my gosh, we're getting 50000 and like we still get to compete for this island. That's what you thought, right? And then he comes yeah. to the alternative, okay, you take the check, and you go home, or you throw it in the fire and compete for the island. Yep. Did anyone keep the check? No. Really? Yeah. So the way they did, it, they did it this time was that the latest subscriber had to pick first. Okay. I was the last person to okay. pick. So tell me what happened. Um, at that point, four you had people the check? had already thrown their checks in the fire. Okay. I had this check, and for myself, one thing I'll note, I had $20 in my bank account before this video took place. Um, I was entrepreneur, <laughs> do or die. I think you're an entrepreneur. You think so? Yeah, I think so. Thank Go you. ahead. Um, I was in the airport, and I had $20, <laughs> and I was like, I can't even get a snack. How crazy is this? This is so crazy. Go ahead. Um, I said I can't get a snack because who knows if I need it like when I'm there and I have to pay for something. So um, twenty dollars. I saved my twenty dollars and um, I was looking at that fifty thousand dollar check. Was um, it like were you really tempted? To, even though everyone I else threw in the fire, were you like yeah yeah? Um, I really was just because of all of my student debt and everything. Mm. Um, I had a lot of debt coming towards me. Yep. So for myself, I just realized like what it could do for me and how it could change like my life. Yep. Um, but then at that point I realized like what winning an island could be and how it could not only change my life, but maybe my family's life yep. and continue onward. Yep. Um, so in my head, I, again, I had that gut feeling. I, I, I was on it. I felt like I was on the ball and I yep. said, screw it. Let's do it. Yeah. 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 So you dump it in the fire. Yeah. I dumped it in the fire. What happens next? <sighs> this part was the most chaotic, stressful part of my life. I couldn't even imagine. Yeah. Now so, you knew there was, did you, by the way, quick question. Did you know there was a payout if you didn't take the island? Did you even know that at this no, point? No, no. Interesting. Go ahead. I just knew there was an so island. So you thought that you're getting an island. If you, if you won, you're getting an island. Yeah. You didn't know you could do something different. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, so for that myself. That makes it even better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes it much more exciting, I'll say that. Um, for me, think about it. Anyone that watches this video. I can't wait to see it. Mr. Beast, right? A 15-minute video. They just want to see the cool little exciting snippets of it. This, for me, was like the biggest moment of my entire life. Three days worth. Um, so when you have cameras in your face, you know, there's some people in that video that are like hilarious. Like they were able to come up with like funny, witty comments on the spot. Yeah. I was sitting there shaking in my boots thinking that this is a life or death situation for me. Your life was on the line, so to speak. Yeah. Not, not physically yeah, yeah. shuffling off this mortal coil, but there was there was a lot at stake right now. Yeah. I knew yeah. there was a whole new life ahead of me. Yeah. If I continued for that. And that was the first time you understood that, right? Yeah. At that moment? Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. So um, for myself, I was extremely determined and mm -hmm. Mr. Beast came over with his play button, which mind you, this was like his biggest video at that point. Um, he had just gotten his 100 million subscribers on YouTube. So he got a huge play button for it. Wow. In a briefcase. And um, he said, hey, guys, I'm hiding this somewhere on the island. The first person to find this wins the island. No. Yes. Really? Yes. So what, he showed it to you. How long did you guys have to play hide and seek? <laughs> like where he had to go hide it and then you I guys could. Overall, it probably took about 45 minutes. Before you found it or before you went to go look for it? Uh, before we found it. Maybe okay. like 10 minutes of him so hiding it. So how is that? Like, that's a, 
Was it a logical thing or did you get lucky? Lucky. Okay, so tell me. Fully, fully lucky. Can you tell us exactly yeah, where you did to find so it? so for me, I had ran around. Everyone scattered, scattered like. Yep. Okay. I immediately, like you could see in the video, they show where everyone's little heads go. <laughs> I immediately ran straight towards the back. The so back like, of the island. I sprint. Island. Yep. I just okay. thought for myself, if I sprint, like I can maybe get a little bit ahead and get to scope around the back part that other people won't be able to see before me. Okay. Um, so. Oh, can you imagine your heart? <laughs> I was racing like, yeah. and imagine sprinting on top of that. So yeah. The adrenaline, the running around, like I um, could not breathe. I was so winded. You could hear my voice in the video. Yeah. I was extremely winded. And um, at one point there was a swimming pool, like I mentioned. Yep. And I thought, well, Mr. Beast, you know, he's kind of crazy. Like maybe he hit this briefcase in the pool. So I was like, okay. I jumped in the pool, like fully clothed and everything. Uh, no briefcase in the pool. I was going to say, was it in the pool? Not in the pool. Okay. So the rest of the video, I'm running around in soaking wet clothes, <laughs> <laughs> digging in sand, trying to find this uh, briefcase. And um, ended up being that I was looking around. I looked at a tree that had a palm tree leaf kind of just like leaning against the tree. Wow. And I was like, okay, I feel like if a leaf falls, it wouldn't really fall like that. Okay. And when I lifted it up, uh, there was a pile of sand, but it wasn't like fresh sand. You know okay. what I mean? Like it wasn't like wet, fresh sand. That's what I had been looking for the entire time. But once I saw what that. What made you sand, look for that? What? Wet sand? Yeah. Uh, just because I was like, maybe he buried it. Okay. And so if he you... buried it, I would guess that there would be fresh, wet sand somewhere. Got it. Got it. Um, so for myself, I was, I saw the hill and I'm like, okay, let's start digging. Let's see what's under here. And as I'm digging, I start seeing the little corners of the briefcase pop that was out. it. And I think you can imagine. Were you thinking that it could have been a fake at first? I didn't at think first. it was a fake. Okay, all right. But I thought it's not really happening. Like in my head, I didn't think this is actually happening. It wasn't happening. registering, yeah. Um, so I'm digging, I'm digging, I'm seeing the corners. Now, is there a camera guy following each yes. person? yep. <laughs> yeah, there so, was. All right, so. They were like, they're at one point, they're like, okay, you're really fast. Like you can take a little breather here and yeah. there. Because they're running around too. And you're like, no, I want I don't want no one to get it before <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. So you're digging, you're digging, you're I'm digging. I'm digging, I'm digging. And um, again, it didn't register until I fully had it in my hands. Because yep. I was like, what if someone else saw it before I did somehow? Or what if someone takes it from me? Or mm. I didn't know how it worked. But in my head, just that thought was just, I need this, I need this briefcase. Yeah. So I was hugging it. And then I just started screaming like, I got it. I got it. And um, all of a sudden, I think the one thing I try to explain to people is like, let's say you just picked up a briefcase. Yep. And all these cameramen come running at you and they're like, you just want an island. How do you feel about it? Yeah, what do you know what to say? Yeah. Shocked. You're speechless. Completely yeah. speechless. Yeah. Immediate tears coming down my face, not knowing how to react. Yeah. Um, That's what they wanted. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. They, they definitely yeah. got the reaction that they were looking for, I think. So, <laughs> so, so you got it. You won. Yeah. You're not, it's not registering, right? Yeah. So you're, you're doing a quick interview afterwards, right? What happens, like, you know, within the next three to five minutes? The next three to five minutes. Everyone's saying, like, you just went on the island. How do you feel? Um, a mix of a million emotions. Yep. Um, for the people that I had met, like, genuinely felt bad for the fact that, that they didn't get the opportunity because all genuinely really good people. Yep. Um, for myself, it was, okay, my life just completely changed in a matter of a split second. Were you thinking about it, all the parties you're going to have on the island and stuff like that? Did that, get, did that, that come in yet? That or? came to thought, you know, a little bit afterwards when I had time to sit down and collect my thoughts. <laughs> um, I would have had crazy yeah, parties. I wouldn't have survived that. It yeah. was just the one thing I'll say. And so, I like, would the beast come over to you? Was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Mr. Beast ran over and, yeah. you want an island? Die. Yeah. You know, and, and then they showed their briefcase. They presented the play button that they had just been awarded. And um, it was like, okay, wrap yeah. that video. Everyone go home. That was it. <laughs> like, the show is over. Uh, yeah. So what happened with you, though? Like, what happened um, What happened next? So with me, the next thing that happened, this is like my favorite moment. That was um, just all within like the 20, 30 minutes? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I'll say, and I don't in any way mean it to come off as ungrateful or anything. I'm the most grateful appreciative person ever um i almost fear that i already lived the best moment of my entire no, life no no that's that's what i think don't think that um because for myself don't even because you'll manifest it don't even No, you're it. right that's yeah, a very good just, point very good point um but for myself i uh, thought that i had experienced the best moment of my life i got put on this boat and I, at that point i was sitting with all strangers i don't think anyone i had competed with was on that boat with me yep. um but we were going back to the other island pitch black you mm. couldn't even see the water from the sky. You could see every single star in the sky. Mm. And I just thought, like, this is the greatest moment of my entire life. So one of many great moments. Yes. 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 It's the stepping stone to many absolutely, other ones. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, 
family, friends weren't there. Like, it's something I experienced all by myself. Can I say one thing, though? Yeah. For all the entrepreneurs that are out there, if you're, ha if you're ha having a level of success, even at a younger age, that doesn't have to be the end of the story. That's a turbocharge. It's a much greater story and have an impact to make the world a better place. Go ahead. I appreciate that outlook. Yeah. I definitely need to keep that in mind, too. No doubt. Because um, you have a, you have a, you have, you are, you represent hope to people for what you do. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So that's why your message got to get out there more absolutely. and more. Absolutely. Um, so for myself, it was getting back, like I said, that moment with just seeing every single star in the sky and yep. realizing like this is the, the best moment ever. And um, at that point, a lot of the people from the other challenges were still there. Yep. Everyone was so genuinely excited for me. So yeah. appreciative. Um, or, so, you know, everyone was just so... They showed you love. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's that's what I'm most thankful for. Like, I, I always say, like, I could have gotten out first in yeah. that competition and it still would have been the greatest experience of that I've ever had. Of course. Yeah, you could talk about it for life. Absolutely. And, um, and was there, like, a dinner afterwards for everybody or was it just, like, you know, um, a party that night or no? Not necessarily because at that point, people were waiting on us to go back to catch that next flight. Okay, got it. So we were sleeping on that airport floor that night. Oh, wow. Um, After you won the island. Yeah. Did you... Were you still the island winner, or was there another conversation that happened that we don't no. know about yet? Nope. There weren't conversations until a couple weeks afterwards. And what you want to share that, or yeah, so absolutely. Or, well, I don't want to go ahead. T take us through that night, the airport, like the feelings. So, you go home. You could, as we talked about at the top, you couldn't tell anybody. Yeah, yeah. Right? So fairly clearly put, um, I had an NDA signed, um, so I wasn't able to share the most, the greatest moment of my entire life for about like three weeks. Yeah. Um, what was that like? It was the hardest thing ever. Oh my goodness. Were you just hiding from the world? Absolutely. I think <laughs> you can tell just from me speaking. I, I love talking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> love talking. I'm a very social, talkative person. Yep. And that was the hardest secret that I've ever had to keep. So what'd you do? I kept it. Did you go to, were you, were you, I think you had said something about you were doing an internship, right? Yes. Oh. Was that part of, was that part of. Like, did so, you go back to the office and not tell anybody Yeah, anything? so I was working an internship at that time. It was totally remote. I was in my last... Oh, it was semester. remote. It was remote. Okay, all right, cool. I was in my last semester of college. And, um, but yeah, I mean, with the internship that I explained, I thought I was going to be able to report back every single night and work my hours at that internship. And I didn't get the opportunity to because yep. I progressed in the video. Um, almost failed my internship, but thank God it led to bigger and greater things. And yes. I didn't fail it, but... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what happened? Tell us what happens. Um, so afterwards, I get back and one of the, a really great moment as well is walking back onto the airplane. And at that point, there was the rest of the remaining work crew, film crew, the rest of the Congratulating you. Um, and walking onto a full airplane of like 100 people and everyone cheering for you and Amazing. everything. It was the coolest experience ever. That entire flight home. Amazing. I would have moments of sitting there and being like, okay, this feels great. Did this really happen? And then there'd be moments where this, is this really happening? Yep. And then I would start bawling my eyes out just in silence to myself. Yep. A flight yep. attendant would come over and hit me tissue every 10 minutes. Wow. Um, and it was just that moment of like really processing what just happened to Amazing. me. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So do you want to uh, let us know about the night when it came out? And yeah. So tell us all about that. Or That part was really exciting um, for now myself. Now did you know that day? It's like, all right, now I get to tell everybody. I, we had like a prediction of when the video would come out, but there was oh, never there was a set no, time. No, I didn't know no, that. No. Okay. Um, was there a warning? Like, hey, it's coming out in 10 we, minutes? We did get a good warning. Okay. Um, but it had come out at least a week later than I thought it was going to. Um, so at that point, yeah, it was sitting down with my family and I recorded myself, like all of our reactions. Did you everything. have friends over too or just family? Just family. Okay. Just family at that point. Um, but it's really crazy. Like I said, like here I was facing the cr craziest like opportunity experience of my entire life. Yep. I'm facing that from within. Yeah. There's cameras on me the entire time. I'm not even worried about the cameras. Yeah. But now, three weeks later, I'm sitting down you realizing there was cameras on my face. Yeah. And Mr. Beach <laughs> just got 100 million subscribers on YouTube and there's a lot of people that are there's about to see my face right 100 million now. people saw you. Yeah. Um, so That's then I got amazing. a little bit nervous, yeah. naturally. Um, so I don't want to get into any details, mm -hmm. right? But, you know, you win an island, but you also have a choice not to take the island. Yeah. And that choice is such a beautiful choice that the the uh, materialistic value of that choice is something that could either destroy or take another human to a whole nother level. Absolutely. If they're right from within with their, you know, mindset with money and everything else. Absolutely. That choice, I'm not going to get into any numbers. That choice, was that that day when you won the island or was that a couple of weeks later? Uh, That's my question. Later. 
So So wait. So now I'm curious. Yeah. So you had no idea that was on the horizon. No. What happened then? Um when the video And was that a hard decision? Yes, it was an actually an extremely difficult decision. Was it a one day decision? Was it a one hour decision? Like what kind of time frame was it? When Over the course of like a week, I would say. Okay. Um, did you get a lot of, did you talk to a lot of people? Yes. Good. Yep. Spoke with a lot of people. Um, for myself, like the, what's, I don't want to say immature, the, the. the inexperience. The inexperience yeah. answer for people. Um, when they asked me like, what are you going to do with the island? I was like, I'm going to keep it for a year. I'm going to take my family to it and then I'll sell it. Yeah. Um, and, and then, it was like a house you could live in on the island, right? Yeah, it was like a cabana. Okay. You can maybe tent out there for a couple nights and okay. tell another storm <laughs> I got came. It. And, Understood. Yeah. And then yeah. You go way, way um, down the ocean. Go ahead. So at that point, I said I was going to take my family and everything, but people said, Mallory, you're the girl that had $20 at the airport. Mm. Those taxes are going to come so up. So these people knew you had choices. Yes. At that point. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And for the folks that are listening, we're not going to get into what the exact choice was monetarily, but think of like a, a, a lottery pick. Or some kind of sports athlete, a top 20, top 30, and I all deal with it's all <laughs> yeah. said and done. Yeah, so um, for myself, there was someone that actually said they wanted to buy the island from me. So real, Was it a real interest? or was it, it, was it was somewhat of a real interest. Like, it was set up with um, companies in the Bahamas, and they wanted to talk about building it into a resort um, and things of that nature. But where it's located and the risk of storms, like real life pirates and things like that. You made a decision that was best for you. Yeah, absolutely. And it took you, you, you didn't make it within one minute or one hour. You, you asked a lot of people, you got some opinions and mm -hmm. you did it over seven days and that's awesome. Absolutely. But my, my question is, cause I want to go back to this cause mm -hmm. the island, that would have been great, right? But, but that financial choice, you didn't see that coming. What did that feel like? Especially when you had $20 in your pocket and we're not um, talking about 50,000 anymore. Yeah, I mean, I. I think you can imagine there was a lot of crying throughout the process. Um, How was your parents during this? Like, like what was that I like? I think everybody was in a state of shock. Like, yeah. like, oh my gosh, this just happened. And so excited, but like not really knowing to the depths of like what it was actually going to feel like. Yeah. yeah. Um, Don't ever lose that feeling. Yeah, no. Best feeling in the entire world. If you tap into that in your nervous system, it could happen over and over again. <laughs> David will tell you that. <laughs> well, I look forward to hearing about that. Yeah, then. he will. Um, but... Yeah, hearing the offer and everything. Um, I don't want to keep saying it didn't feel real, but it didn't feel real. Like yeah. to this day, it does not feel real to me that I want an island. Like yeah. I, I try explaining that to people all the time. I don't think it ever will at this point. Yeah. What about when you look on your, your bank account? That that was the coolest. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that, again, was another day of crying and just, I wasn't sure when it was going to happen, but yeah. when it did, um, this is a wire the, the best experience ever. Um, yeah. A lot of debt that I had coming up. Um, Again, just being like one of four girls. Is all the debt wiped out? Yes. I don't care what the number yep. is. Did you pay it all off? All Student paid loans, off. the whole nine yep. yards. Paid off. Awesome. Yep. Look at that. So let me ask you, the next five years, mm -hmm. what does it look like for Mallory? Um, that's why I'm talking to you. Let's I'm really go. trying to get some great advice over here. Um, one thing I've been considering is real estate. Yep. Um, obviously, the market's a little bit tough right now, so I'd like to learn a little bit more about that and yep. seeing what my options are there. Um, I think everyone here that I've talked to since winning has suggested investing, um, putting it in certain areas. But for myself, I feel like I've been granted this golden ticket. Yeah. And I really don't want to screw it up. I'm yeah. so terrified to, to, to ruin it. Um, yeah. So for myself, I'm holding on to it. And I, I, I realize I need to let go of it a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really trying to figure out what's the best case scenario here. Yeah, the lowest I, risk. I think for you, there's a couple of things. Um, very, uh, one of my coaches and men mentors, David Meltzer, mm -hmm. introduced us. And, and the reason why that happened is because Mallory went up right to him after he was speaking. And yeah. he is a great speaker. Uh, major shout out, David. I love <laughs> you with all my heart. And um, that's how Mallory and I got connected. And, you know, when I first spoke with Mallory, I was like, hey, let's let's do a podcast. And she said yes. Spoke with her dad as well for everyone that's, that's listening. <laughs> great guy, Mr. Divine. What's up? Thank you. Um, and then I spoke to David and, and I said I would connect you guys. And I think that you have the ticket, which is the monetary value, but you really have the enterprise value, which is that experience mm -hmm. and your story, which we're trying to tell right now. Yeah. Right. So I think that for you, um, you know, Epic would be here to help at any of that stuff when it comes to what you've already achieved. I believe that a good, a good thing for you would be to connect with some folks that have been there, done that. You know, I think of Dr. Taryn Marie. I mean, I can't help not think about her, and she's not far from 
from where you are. Mm-hmm. Number one and number two, I think of David Meltzer. Like I think that he has done wonders for me. Um, you know, he's one of three coaches that I have in my life. A major shout out to Sean Callagher always. Um, you know, I want to shout out to uh, to Dave Meltzer as well. And Jay Bilstein is the one that got this started for me in the late nineties. I always I always want to reinforce how I started, mm-hmm. right? So um, I think for you, I just, you know, Alexa and I were talking off camera and Kevin's here and I'm just watching how mesmerized he is and just watching what's happening right now and it's pretty cool. And he's he's had a lot of great experience in his life. He has a pretty good YouTube channel, YouTube channel himself. And I think it's about proximity. It's about who's your top five, whose shoulders can you stand on and learn from what they did yeah. and expedite or accelerate your process. And um, I mean, listen, I think you're well, as you know, you don't want to say stuff like, hey, I got this golden ticket. I don't want to lose it because then your brain will teach you how to lose it. Yeah. Right. So you want to you want to change the language, at least I would, and ask a, diff- a different question. How can I capitalize on what I've done to get this beautiful opportunity and make it more perpetual and help other people improve in their life, knowing that they could do what I did? Maybe not win an island, but overcome <laughs> certain fears and miss and certain obstacles in their path so they can live a life of wealth and financial freedom. And that's about service and contribution. Yeah. So um, I think that's where you're on that great path right now. And um, that's why I always say, where does it look in the next five years? Yeah. Let me, let me move the money to the side for a second. What, is, what do you want to do in the next five, ten years to make the world a better place? Yeah. I Who actually, do you want to impact and help? I really love that you asked me that question um, because I really wanted to mention just the fact of Mr. Beast himself I want to talk about for a second. Sure. I think there's a lot of people in this world today that are famous Probably not for the best reasons. Like yep. Mr. Beast is the most selfless person that I've ever met. It's amazing. Um, just what he does for people. He really does change people's lives, he obviously. Does. Um, so for myself, I've been extremely inspired by it. One thing I did for myself, when they're rolling the cameras on the island, they said, hey, if you win an island, what are you going to do? Yeah. Um, I know somebody by the name of Kuniga. Uh, he lives in Uganda. Yep. And I had created before for him a GoFundMe to raise him money to go to college, become nice. a nursing student. How much did we, was it able to raise? Um, you could brag about that. I That's... had about like $1,000 at that time. That's awesome. Um, but for myself, I said if I win an island, the first thing I'm going to do is pay for Kuniga to go to college. Wow. Um, so that is like one thing I'm doing. And um, the second thing that I did is I created a scholarship within my high school. And I purposely called it the Pay It Forward Award. Love it. Because I love it. I wanted to award that person with money, and I specifically chose a student that isn't recognized for their academics. Love it. Or you know, sports or anything like that. Um, but just that kid that will say hi to anyone in the hallway. Yeah. Will go to their out of their way to make someone else smile. Yep. So I picked a student like that, and I gave them an award, but at the same time gave them some cash, and I said, hey, I want you to pay this forward yeah. and give it to someone else. Yeah. Um, I think Mr. Beast's mes- message is so impactful and so important. Um, his his motto is, I just want to make the world a better place before I die, and yeah. I think that's exactly who we should be making super famous, and we should continue to spread that elsewhere too. That's amazing. And and your your other teammates, you connected with a lot of those folks? Uh, the teammates ones in what way? From, um, from the island, like the folks. That, you, yeah, yeah. You know, the other contestants. Yeah. What, what is that like? The, is there... You guys get together? Is there a lot of conversations? So for the most part, everyone's spread out throughout the country, but um, random little side fact is I moved to Austin, Texas when I was unemployed for a little while. This was after you won the island. After I won the island. <laughs> uh, thankfully, I, had a, I did not, you know, didn't have $20 to spare. I had a little bit more to spare. And um, at that point, the highlight of my day was looking forward to my one sister's basketball games every day. Love it. Loved it. Love it. But for me, I felt like I wasn't doing enough for myself. Got it. Um, saw a really cool thing is about Austin on TikTok and I booked him on my flight. No. And I said That's called financial freedom. <laughs> By the way, financial freedom in our the way we define it is to do what you want when you want, yep. how you want with who you want, without any money or time constraints. Yep. And that's what you did. Yep. So uh moved there for a little bit and I forget where I was going with this. Just like what was that? you know, your friends with some of the contestants. Oh yeah. So like when I was there, there were actually some people that were there for like bachelor trips and things like that. So I've seen a bunch of people there. Um, I mentioned my one friend Deanna. The job I work today is because of Deanna that I met in that video. Amazing. Yep. Um so yeah, I definitely keep in communication with them all pretty often. Now is there like a Mr. Beast reunion? Is there stuff with the show? No, there you, isn't. Yeah, do you have connective tissue with any of the folks there? Yeah, with like the cast and crew, I think I've become extremely friendly with all of them just throughout my time of filming. Um, so a lot of times I'll just check in with them and see how they're all doing. Yep. Um, one thing I'll mention actually, this was 
very i think this goes to show that mr beast like really does do the impossible mm. um he puts his everything into making these videos possible um i was getting my hair done one day and got a random phone call um from this woman named alex love alex and she said hey like are you available right now and i said yeah like what do you need and she's like, you live near Philly, right? And, you know, for me, it's like an hour and a half. So I'm like, yes. Yeah, like, sure. What can I do for you? Yeah, yeah. I owe my life to these people. And uh, she said, what are the odds you can go pick up tape, like tape, <laughs> and fly it to North Carolina for us right now? She said, we have another video coming up. What kind of plane was it? Was it a private jet? No. Oh, all right. No, that would have been really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, it was a regular commercial airline. But they paid for the ticket? Or they you... paid for the ticket. Yep. Imagine me lugging two huge suitcases. Wow. Filled with tape and security. Imagine what how kind that of tape? Went. They didn't, they didn't it have like it? It was like a double-sided tape. I don't know the exact kind. You think they were testing you? or No, no. Okay. You know what it was? I think it came out later. They did um, a video, and it was ages 1 to 100. Yep. And it was like a 100, 100 boxes, and it was yep. like the last to leave their little area. Got it. Uh, one, but I think in terms of building their little cubicles, they needed that tape for it. So you jumped on a plane by one phone call while you were getting a haircut to go fly from Philly to where? To Raleigh. But you had to go buy two big boxes of tape first. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. And then you dropped it off and left, or did you get I to hang out? I dropped it off and got the first flight back home. Didn't even week. hang out? Nope. That's amazing. I wanted though. to, but because of like their COVID protocols and everything. Oh, this was during COVID. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and they're just extra cautious about those things, obviously. Yeah. Um, so if someone wants to follow you, are you on Instagram? Yeah, or yeah. How do people follow you? It's just Instagram, Mallory Devine, as spelt. Do you send messages or you like I mean, you do videos? Yeah, I'm like public. I'm very receptive to anyone that messaged me or anything. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I'm That's always awesome. willing to talk and communicate with anybody. And do people reach out to you privately? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you're constantly email. helping people out. Absolutely. Amazing. Yeah. Fast forward 20, 30 years from now, what does this look like for you? Um, I don't, I don't know exactly what it looks like yet. For myself, I really want to be stable financially. I want to be able to support myself, support my future family. Yep. Um, again, I have a twin sister. I have two younger sisters who are going to be in the same exact amount of debt that I was in. Yep. I really want to be able to support them. Yep. Um, and my parents, I mean, you know, as they do as much as they can to support us. Yeah. They have four girls. That's, yeah. that's definitely not easy. And what does your mom and dad do? Uh, so my mom, she works in a healthcare office. Yep. Um, for the longest time, though, she was a stay-at-home mom. And domestic I her, engineer. She's that's <laughs> domestic, a domestic engineer. Yeah. That's a really good yeah. way to put it. Um, I give all my credit to her. I think just having her at home, I think me and Natalie were raised to just be the people that we are today because of her. Yeah. Um, and my dad is in baking, life insurance. He's been doing all that. He does life insurance? He does. I didn't he know did that. for a portion of time. I'm not sure if he's currently in that. Uh, I'd love to talk to him privately. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I didn't know that he does life insurance. He does a, amazing. a lot of different things. Good he's for him. He's popping around. You say he, does ba he bakes too? He was in banking. Oh, life banking. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I just said baking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That accent. <laughs> Sorry. So, yeah, no, let me definitely talk to Mr. Devine. I'd love yeah, to have a conversation with that'd him. That'd be great. That's awesome. Well, anyway, folks, once again, we hunt human excellence. Mallory Devine, go check her out on Instagram, private messenger. Ask her any questions. She'll answer them if she can. And I want to thank you so much for being here Thank today. you so much for having I me. I really appreciate it. That was an awesome interview. What a great experience. Thank you so much. And, you know, the thing I would say is the gift of what you went, you went after it mm -hmm. and you won that feeling never has to change. It's just about serving and contributing to others. And you'd be amazed how perpetual things are. I love it. I want to thank you so much it. for coming out. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. All right, folks, continue to follow. We're dropping nuggets daily, as you know. Like, subscribe, and share, and wait for that bell to go off. We're putting out videos every day that we can on a daily basis to give you more education and hope to do what you think you can't do and make the impossible to impossible.